No, I, I get what you mean, but she's bad, man. She's she's a baddie. She's a baddie. Welcome to the Cheap Ass Podcast. Where we talk about life, love, and everything in between. With little to no equipment. This, this is the Cheap Ass show. show. We're here. And we're live. Hey guys, welcome to our first uh, podcast. So today we have uh, Cooper. Yes, sir. Um, that's our first guest, first ever guest on the show. Uh, I hope not the last. Uh, <laughs> that would be great. I hope you like it, guys. And I think we can now introduce ourselves. My name is Thomas. I will be one of the hosts today. And, and I'm Francois, and I'm the tech guy and also a secondary host. Welcome, everybody. So first question, guys. You know, it's pretty cliche, but always the same. Cooper, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, my name's my artist name is Coop. My birth name is Cooper. I come from America, Washington State specifically, Spokane, Washington, to Olympia, to Seattle, all that jazz. Uh, yeah, just been wandering around Europe for three months to be making music and meet cool people like these two Frenchies. And yeah, yeah, now we're here. Start of the podcast is pretty tight. Right before I leave, which sucks, but you know, it's cool. That's cool. That's cool indeed, guys. Uh, can you just tell us how how did we met? Yeah, I'm. Oh, I met I met Francois at a really shitty club, really shitty club. But it was a good time. I met a lot of people that I spent a lot of time with. Now, I met Francois at Imperial. I'm. I think I met you at. I don't know where. I, I think it was. It must have been Blue Bar. No, it was in the club uh, Suspiro. That's where we met? Yeah, near to Piazza Venezia. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, and, uh, yeah. I, I don't remember a lot of that night, but I, I remember that. No, we, we, that's the funny thing, because with Cooper that night, I was a bit occupied, let's say. <laughs> yes, he so was. I, I, I was with a, I was with a girl, so I wasn't really focused on him, but we just met at the end. Uh, it was pretty funny, by the way, because we had a nice story about it. I think. Yeah, yeah. With the McDonald's shit and stuff. Yes, it was, yes. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I forgot that was the same night. That's the one thing I've noticed about being out in Rome in this time is every night blends together. Like when I meet people, this happened the other night. I met someone. No, it was at the fucking birthday party. This girl came in and she was like, I saw you at uh, yeah, like some store and then the club and then Blue Bar. And I was like, have we met before? She was like, yeah like we've met multiple times and i was like i literally i've been meeting so many people and it all blends together that like i don't know what day is when i meet people and like i thought i met you the same night that i met most people but it was a completely different time it was a different night yeah it was a different night i think maybe that's that's the thing with rome um maybe also we don't know the city as much as roman people yeah. that's for sure because i've only been here for like almost three months now i think but uh, it's always the same kind of. I, even though I really like it, like I enjoy the city. It's a great city, yeah. that's for sure. But still, it's like San Lorenzo, and then like let's guys, let's grab a let's grab a drink at San Lorenzo, and then let's go to a nightclub or to a like after party or something like that. But um, maybe Francois, who's been here for like almost two years now, one year and a half. That's crazy. I forget. It's has been some two years things to say about it i don't know <laughs> about rome specifically yeah about the, the nightlife i have to say i'm yeah. curious about the nightlife like your especially because both of you are just from europe right like my experience with european nightlife compared to the states is like that was honestly one of the biggest shocks was like you guys don't fucking start the night really until like 11 or like if not later and like the clubs don't even open until like one sometimes and like it, i know I like when I was in Budapest and like Prague, that was the same thing. But like, is Rome, is that like a very Roman thing where like it's late or would you just say it's like European in general that like that lifestyle? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I think <clears throat> um, Europe is a very diverse place, yeah. albeit very small. Um, what I do know is that, yes, Italy is quite similar to France in, in, in the sense that we do go out pretty late. I don't know. I've heard from fellow Canadians that clubs close at 2 a.m. Oh, in that part dude. of the world. Is that real is that true? it's fucking like like where i'm from where i go to school in olympia shit closes like every restaurant is closed by 8 p.m you cannot get food so like we go to the bars and all the bars close at two no cap oh, no cap no cap no cap no yap straight Dude, facts straight facts, facts. Straight facts. All <laughs> it's 2 a.m everything's done so like 
we usually like are going to bed by like four ish which like now being here i'm like damn that's early. like last night i went to bed around three and i was like oh it's an early night like i'm getting rest but in the states that's a, a late night is like once the shit closes then you just go home all right i do have to admit i don't know if it's rome but my my sleep cycle has been pretty messed up here i think there must be something about the energy and uh, the people and the southern european lifestyle that just really influences me in a bad way or <laughs> could be a good way depending on how you see it um but, yeah um, yeah toma you've only been here for a couple of weeks so what or months so how do you feel about this I really think like the the cultural difference between Europe and in the US on like nightlife is it's a thing like yeah, that's for, for sure, sure because that's you just have to be on fucking TikTok on Insta Reels to yeah. see like funny videos like oh the first thing that shocked me between the US and Europe yeah the biggest difference like, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. that type of video on TikTok but I uh, I think it's a it, it's it's a true thing but also you Cooper like he hang out with uh, our group since like one week but well. He was with her, with her, uh, with uh, he was with us. Sorry, guys. <laughs> he was with us uh, for the last uh, week. And I think also the, the group is mainly composed of like uh, foreign students, yeah. Erasmus students, or people like myself uh, who are here like a bit like freelance. Let's say I'm I'm working on the side, I make some French lessons, working for a company in the U.S. But it's like I really arrange my time as I, as I want it. Yeah. So I, I don't think I have like. A, a job to go to in the morning i don't have a uh, a school to go to in the morning and that's the same for francois he will maybe tell uh, tell you more about him after that so i think also you you also have that like small spectrum because sure. we have people without like the erasmus friend of francois for example and my erasmus friends everybody knows that erasmus is like bullshit like this <laughs> yeah two yeah. hours per week of lessons so nobody goes to Nobody goes to the. Um, oh, sorry. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like something. <laughs> I, I thought it was. I think that's the one thing. Like, what well, I really fucking like, I, I admire about all the like. I mean, even though it is Erasmus, and like some people say, I can't say anything because my school is way more of a joke than any Erasmus program. But I think one thing that is very admirable is like when I go out with you guys, or like we're going out, and I get home at like five, six, seven in the morning. I'm sleeping all day and recovering because I have nothing else to do except make music on my own time. But everyone else, most other people like have to get up within like a couple hours to go to work or go to school. And that shit's fucking impressive. Like I could not do that at all. And like, I've been out with people where like, I am, we're all just so tanked. And then I go to bed and I wake up like seven hours later, it's like 3 PM. And I see on their stories, like they had a full day of school. They worked they went out and like did other shit and i was like oh god like i don't know how you fucking do that but i think also it's just like kind of that they don't have a choice where it's like i do probably but yeah it's impressive very impressive no, thanks for that well in rome you know do as the romans do i guess <laughs> yeah exactly but anyway let's move on back to your life what do you do back home you're a rapper a why did you start traveling what what's the point of your travel in europe um yeah, man. yeah tell us about yourself yeah I, so I started rapping, I think I was 14 when I started. No, I was like 15 or 16 when I started rapping. I never had really much inclination with music. I played violin for like two years as a child and just gave up on it. Like the best song I could play was Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles, which made me feel pretty fucking good. And then stop playing. I don't know why. I just like, I'm, I'm not a very like motivated person when it comes to things that require practice i've realized like besides sport like i played soccer football my whole life but uh that was like the only thing that i dedicated a lot of time to that i like continued with but i played guitar for like a year and then i just stopped because my parents were like if you're not going to practice you're wasting our money and i was like yeah fair so i stopped playing guitar and then soccer was like my thing like that's what i knew i was going to do my whole life and like i wanted to try to like go semi-pro and do all these things and then i got three very major concussions like back to back to back all within a year apart from each other in high school and so i wasn't able to play any soccer i played when i was three years old up to 15 and then i got my first concussion couldn't play for like four or five months i was out I was out of school and then like three months after I recovered, I got another concussion playing soccer again, like my first time back. 
and then exact same thing i got another one like six months after so i only was able to play my senior year of high school which sucked but i wasn't supposed to like the doctor was like it's illegal in some states after you have three concussions to play sports and this after my third concussion he was like you shouldn't play anymore and i was like this is all i want to do so i'm going to do it and like my mom was just crying in the doctor's room just like was super upset that i wanted to play and i played but then like during those concussions not being able to have soccer like that was all i did in my free time like i would either be watching it playing it practicing training and not being able to physically do those things i needed to find something to like take me out of this like of, not take me out of reality but like a place to escape a like hobby to have kind of and i was like well the only other thing that i love as much as soccer is listening to music i really enjoy listening i don't think i could make any music but let me try and like hip-hop is my favorite and so i like got the basics i got like a super shitty microphone and like just little recording session and was like fuck this is really fun let me try it and then it just kind of developed from that and i met a bunch of my homies gavin and aiden back home that we all started rapping together and bought studio equipment over the years and yeah that's when i started and then i put out my first like super shitty album when i was like 17 did a show sold out my show which was pretty fucking tight yeah i had to like hand sell the tickets it was like 40 tickets and gotta do what you gotta do man. yeah dude that's, it was, that's the it was cool like to do it in person instead of like oh buy it online it was like the venue only gave you 15 tickets to sell and if you sell 15 you go back and you get more and so i was coming back every day and they're like holy shit like you're actually making some some traction i was like yeah and then right after that show a week later COVID hit like i was finally like this is it this is what i want to do forever and then COVID and yeah may i interject i know of course countless people who had amazing plans lined up mm -hmm. before COVID, and then COVID for some reason just messed up everything yeah. everyone had something great planned i don't know if it was a good thing in the end but yeah sorry to hear that yeah i feel like it worked out in my favor because like i didn't know what i was really doing with the music like i just had all this like traction so i was like this is going to be fucking amazing but then like thinking about it now like i still didn't really know what i was doing so if COVID hadn't hit it still would have taken me probably the same amount of time that it did to figure out like different recording techniques to get better at rapping like I was not good at rapping when that came out. And now like, I feel like I am decent at it for sure. And like, I wasn't producing any of my own beats. Like that album was all beats from YouTube. And now after that album, I was like, well, I want to be able to make something. I want to be able to rap on something that I made and that I know what I want to hear on it. So then I started getting into producing and then I was producing more than I was rapping and then rapping more than I was producing. And I just go back and forth with that. But yeah so that was the the main part of like high school and beyond and then i decided to go to school for music well actually environmental studies i was going to go to school for and because i was there with covid there was no re like we live in a forest basically my college and that's why i went for environmental studies and then covid hit so i was taking my environmental study classes on zoom for six hours in my dorm and it was just, it took all the love I had for environmental studies just completely out of my body. Like I was like, fuck, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, well, the music thing's still working and I was making music at the time. So I decided to do that instead. And now I've just been studying music and I ended up in Europe with it, which is pretty fucking tight. And, and you met us, man, you yeah. met us. That's, yeah. that's the cool part exactly. of the story. The I coolest guess. part of the story is that that's I the met cool these part. guys. So you can make music because yeah. you were like, oh, I like to listen to music. Could I do it? And yeah. So you can fucking do it, you know? That's, yeah. That's the cool part. Okay. Yes. So do you think like COVID in a way with the, um, I would say like the opportunity to have, even though it's like, it was an awful thing, we don't say the yeah, opposite, but with the opportunity it gives you to like, uh, you know, uh, be alone, maybe, I don't know, work on that during the lockdown. I know for me, for example, I, I put myself to sport, like to gym a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. Really. It was so cool. I had a home gym, pretty well equipped. We talk about it okay, already. <laughs> that's for next, yeah, that's for next episode when we get like a, a super high athlete. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was, it's sad to say it was an opportunity and also we missed an exam in France. So it was, yeah, it was really chill. But, it was also for you like something great or something that helped you over i think so overall, i think or, yeah. i think it did i think it kind of i mean i think it forced everyone 
to kind of like i don't know i feel like when life deals a lot of these things out like tragedies or like you fuck up your plans or whatever you're getting what you need not what you want like obviously i wanted to like keep doing shows and all this shit but like what i needed was to like practice my craft and like actually like i wasn't producing at that time and then because of covid i was like okay i'm stuck in my room all day let me try to make some music that's not just writing down lyrics and so that started working and then I mean, for me, the biggest blessing with COVID was like, that's how I met my girlfriend at the time. And we were together for like three years was, well, we had been good friends for a year before COVID, but then because like a lot of my homies, unfortunately were not being safe. And like, I was still seeing my grandparents and shit. I had a very small bubble of like my COVID bubble and she was one of them. And then like, we've been best friends for a year. And then because we were spending only time with each other, we were like, oh, maybe I'm in love with you actually. And then that happened. So it was a big blessing with a lot of things for sure. And luckily none of my family died. None of them got super ill. So that was also, yeah, like a big, big thing. Fair enough. All right. We'll come back to the relationship part of your, of your life very soon, but let's stay on the, on the, on the music side. How would you define yourself as a rapper? What, 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 what is, what is Coop? Yeah. Good question. What is Coop guys? What, what is, is Coop? Coop? Um, I think I've noticed recently, I mean, I had an album come out in January that took me over, it was a year and a half of in the making. And it went from like the, the album that I, I made when I got to college, I made like my sophomore year of, high, of college. And I made that in my dorm room within two months. It was like seven songs and it was cool. But I listen to it now. I'm like, there wasn't a whole lot of heart in it it was just more like i want to push it out so people know that i am an artist but this album brown's edition which is the neighborhood that i was from in spokane that was more like i want to show the world that like i can fucking rap because like the garden was the title of the one i dropped early college and it's nothing special it sounds kind of cool and like there's some good bars in there but like brown's edition like every single song is me rapping my ass off and like I wanted it to be more of like a rap album than like some other aspects of it. And so we spent a year and a half doing that, which was great. And a lot of it was live instrumentation. We were lucky enough to like be in a lot of live studios because that's what we were studying. And um, so it was like very much like hard hitting rap and listening to it now, it's definitely what I needed to like get out of my body at that time and like release but like it's very hard for people to listen to like it's funny when i'm here and like the night i met you at the club a bunch of these girls were like oh my god you make music you make music i was like yeah and like every time people just immediately give me their spotify and i like put in my spotify but then like they listen to it and like the songs on brown's edition there's like maybe two or three that you can listen to immediately and be like oh okay this is good the other ones like if you're not listening it's like way too like they're like just hard hitting like very intense rap so at the time of that making i'd be like i'm a like i would describe myself as like a real rapper like i'm trying to like like boom bap era type shit but now being out in europe i've had so much space and so much time like it's been three months completely by myself which i've never had and i don't know if i ever will have like this amount of time again by myself and I realized that my intention going forward with this trip was to make music like strictly for fun, like no intention of like, I want to prove myself or I want to like show myself that like I can rap like this, blah, blah, blah. I just want to make music that feels really good to make. And like the biggest thing with Brown's edition was like, if I thought about the audience, I wouldn't have put the album out because I would have known that like it wouldn't have done well because it's hard to listen to if you don't like care enough to listen to it. But everything that I've been making funny enough for fun is like the most listenable to shit because it's just like feel good. Like I've been working on this EP called Miss Calls that I just finished up like last month and it's just so fun. And like, I know that when it comes out, that's going to be the one that people are like, Oh, but at the same time, the biggest thing, how I would describe myself as an artist in whole is definitely a hip hop producer and rapper, but 
that's not like stuck in a box, you know, like I've been making, I think the next album is going to be like an indie album, indie rock, indie folk. And just like, I like all music. So it's kind of, it's weird to be like, Oh, I'm only a rapper. Like, and also it's just fun. Like that's the biggest thing that I've realized is I've been making it for fun and for people to like have fun listening to it. Just, just have a question because on some way you, you, you gave the example of uh, handing out your like Spotify account. Yeah. And so to, to, to trust people with your art in a way, or at yeah. least uh, also to see them. And I, I know I, I read some poetry myself mm -hmm. and it took me a lot of bravery, you know, to, to be like, yes, I, I don't define myself as a poet. Like, yeah. of course, but to be like, Hey guys, like I'm writing poetry. Would you be cool to like, just have a while or like have a read yeah just read it and and told me like do you like it and you now at one point also was just like read it i don't care what you think about it it's yes. like just read it and enjoy it if you enjoy it yeah and if you don't like that's life you know exactly. but it, how much time did you take to take that step you know of like being saying I'm, i do music and also showing like being brave enough to show you like somebody's saying oh can i listen and be like yeah or even maybe asking people do you want to listen yeah i'm not and maybe not with stranger but even with friends you know it's it's it's, it's a scary move to do i did it i'm, I'm proud of me now and I'm, i yeah. feel i feel way way more like um comfortable with this idea of like i write poetry i'm not a poet i yeah. write just for fun because i like it But yeah, how, how, how did you take that step? Like, was it hard? Yeah, that's a great question. I think like for me, it's, I think COVID honestly, like being able to, like we were talking about before the podcast started of like, I, I've recently had friends because I've been making music for like four or five years now that like that people have known where people are like, you, you know what you sound like all the time. Like you recording yourself all the time. You're listening to your voice all the time, thousands of times. So like, does that feel weird? And it's funny. because like at the time I remember when I first started recording and it sounded, I was terrified of how I sounded. I was like, fuck, this sounds really weird. I don't think I could ever put anything out for anyone to listen to. And like specifically recording in front of even like my best friends, I was so uncomfortable and so just like tight and like, I don't want to do this. But then I think COVID gave me the opportunity to like spend so much time with myself and listen to my voice enough where after I put out my first project, I was like, okay, now my voice is out there. People know what I sound like. It doesn't fucking matter anymore. And like, after putting so many hours into it, I stopped caring. And I think one thing that I really appreciate about myself and how I carry myself as an artist is like, my biggest mentor is Rick Rubin, like hands down. And he talks about the moment you are making music or any creative, like if you're doing any creative act and you think about the outcome or you think about the audience's perspective or what their reaction is going to be, you lost it. You're not doing, you're not in the process of making art anymore. You're making something for an outcome. And so after like really realizing that over the working of like the last album i'd say it took me honestly like probably over a year to like get to that point but after i put out my music i was like well now nothing's gonna change regarding like how i feel about it and people now i think it's funny now for like even my friends or like my fans that have been listening to me for like multiple years now at first knowing me is like oh that's cooper like from high school it's funny he's making music And now like they'll listen to it and be like, this is a song, like this is an actual like artist. And then they're like, you can kind of separate the artist from the person. But I'm grateful that that finally happened because I was worried that it, <laughs> that differentiating would never occur. <laughs> really happy to hear that you're growing as an artist in a direction that you're happy with. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a question, two small questions. Could you cite, first of all, could you cite a few influences you've had musically Oof, that, yes. that have led you to this point? And second of all, uh, could you uh, give your younger self or some young, new, up and coming artist some tips on yeah. how to get to this point or to a further point yeah. in an easier way than you had it? Yeah, I love those questions. Um, Man, I got so many influences. It differs all the time. The last couple of days, I've been in a big, like, Mac DeMarco, King Cruel. That's some good shit, man. Bon Iver. Right back. There, yeah. yeah, dude. Like, that shit's been really... Their songwriting is just fucking incredible. And, like, how mellow they are is something that I've really been cherishing. But 
overall, I mean, Earl Sweatshirt, Mac Miller, Tyler the Creator, Amine, fucking all of Griselda, old shit like Nas and, and Wu Tang and Biggie and yeah, so many. But I, I get a lot of inspiration now from like indie artists like Faye Webster, um, fucking I've found a lot of artists recently that have been inspiring me, but yeah, those are the main ones. Or like Alabama Shakes are fucking huge. Oh, guys, <laughs> just go listen to Alabama Shakes because this is seriously some fucking great shit. This is seriously amazing. Yeah, that that album, Sound and Color, is my number one album of all time. All time. If you haven't listened first of all, you need to listen. Every, I didn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> every head must, must bow. Every mouth must confess. Alabama Shakes. Yes. Is really good. Yes. It's some good shit right there. It's fucking incredible. And I would say that's like her, the lead singer, uh, Brittany, she like her and Bon Iver, I really like they crack their voices with like intention. And like that's something that I do in my raps a lot is like I it's funny because like my my stepdad and like other people have thought that like when my voice breaks or like cracks in a song or gets squeaky. I just found out that a lot of people think that that's an accident, but like I do it on purpose because like I would if it was an accident I wouldn't keep it in the fucking recording, but no like Brittany and 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 Justin from Bon Iver like they really do that with like a lot of intention and so I get a lot of inspiration from them, but yeah that's a whole bunch of shit I could name more and more but those are the the basics, and then yeah I think the biggest advice i would give to anyone that's trying to do this is that like you can only do it for yourself like your ego gets in the way of so many parts of it and still my ego gets in the way of of certain creations and i have to take my time and really reflect upon why i'm making this music or what my intention with it is but i think the biggest advice i would give someone is like only make it for you and and really really do not think about the outcome like if it's supposed to happen it's gonna happen like i'm at a point now where like i have actual fans like people in olympia and seattle come up to me and they're like coop what the and like i've never seen these people in my life and like it it works when when you start to forget about like not forget about the dream but being like i want to get to this level like I don't know what level I want to get to at this point. I want to be able to make music for the rest of my life and that's it. I don't care if I get no more fans after this or if I get like 30,000. Like I don't care as long as I'm able to do it for me and express myself in a way that makes me feel good. That's it. And I think every artist that is making art for that reason are some of the fucking best artists in the world and why we like their music so much is because it's for them and then that's why we like them is because it's not really for us. So that's what I would say is make it for you. Don't give a fuck about anyone else. And if it works out, if it's supposed to, it will. And yeah, don't be worried about an outcome. Just going to ask a question because when you talk about Mark DeMarco, mm. do I pronounce it well? Ma yeah. Ma yeah. Can you say it? Mark DeMarco. Mark DeMarco? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the French, the French has accent. <laughs> it's always in the way, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry for your ears. Um, you, you you talk about like the the lyrics and mm -hmm. how they write songs, and I know again I'll talk. I know it's a podcast about you, but I'm gonna talk about no, me yeah. again. But it's all I write poetry, out. and of course, even when I listen to music, I read poetry also. And when so when I listen to music, I think uh, the lyrics have a. To be honest, for me, it's a fifty-fifty almost. Yes, between melody and 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 and, Agreed. and lyrics. If if you don't talk about nothing interesting, like I don't want to be rude, but just. But for me, I don't know. I, yeah, no, I, just, I agree. I, I, I won't listen. I think, yeah. in general, except if it's like a language I don't speak. Yeah, that helps a bit. But yeah, now I, I, I kind of understand English, French, stuff like that. So I, I could get it. So, how big of an importance uh, it's the lyrics are for you? Do you want to tell a story? Do you want to have fun? Do you want to yeah. explain something? I, I am with you with that. Like, but honestly, it's fifty-fifty for even how I feel about it. Like. Sometimes, like, I remember growing up listening to, like, everyone's listening to, like, trap. And, like, I was like, what the fuck are you listening to? Like, the beat is great. Yeah. But, like, they're saying the same shit over and over. It's the same subject matter, blah, blah, blah. 
But then I'll never forget my older brother. He was like listening to it and he's the one who put me on to like lyrical rap like earl sweatshirt like matt like all these people that i listen to that are very good lyricists and have amazing writing i would listen to this trap i would listen to him play and i'd be like what the fuck why are you playing this like i thought you liked the the good shit and then he was like dude sometimes like it's not about the words it's about the feeling and i was like okay didn't really understand that and then after he told me that i was like oh shit totally and so now I listen to things that are super lyrical or I listen to things where like I'm barely listening to the words and it's just like, it makes me feel good. But for my own music, I think one of the best things about being a rapper is having the ability to make words sound cool and to like, to make shit sound cool, not just words, but like I love, and I realized this actually like a year ago with one of my roommates kind of had like a a trauma unblocking of like my concussions were like very traumatic and I didn't realize that until I got older but they slowed like how I process things a lot like I mean one of my concussions I was out for like six months of school and like I couldn't read I couldn't write like I was stuck in my room with like all my lights off and my shades down like I wasn't supposed to do anything and I remember after all of those every time and during i felt really stupid like i was like fuck i'm literally processing things slower it takes me like for a test that takes kids like 30 minutes it would take me two hours to like even read through it and understand it and so i realized talking to my friend like a year ago that i think rapping the reason i like rapping so much is because it makes me feel really intelligent like when i can piece words together and like tell a story that is super cohesive and it sounds good and it feels good, I feel like the smartest fucking person that I know. And so I'd say Brown's edition was very much so important, like with the lyrics, like I cared so much about the lyrics. Now I'm in a phase where I care more about the feeling. So I say I change, honestly, like whenever, whatever phase I'm in, but I hope that I can get to a point where I can find like a cool balance with both in an album or like a project of any kind. But I think this EP that's coming out soon, I think kind of could be that one where there's stories being told, but also like a good, a good mix of like, it feels good and sounds good. Yeah. I think of course, yeah, you, you shouldn't melody like um, lyrics is important but also like the beats and everything is important in the song and also when i'm speaking about good lyrics it doesn't have to be like poetry or like mm -hmm. um super deep stuff just yeah. uh, it's also good that it's not like uh, the same you always listen to totally. it's a bit different yeah it's really really insightful and interesting uh, to get to know you this way to know to, to get to know coop this way it's also celebrity. just cool for the people listening because like absolutely we've we've talked but like we haven't talked this much about right like right. each other so for we're some. all learning about each other right but for all you fans out there yeah this is, this is a real coop <laughs> and um yeah we talked about this a few times already but i want our listeners to know more about your your impressions of life in america and especially mm. spokane yeah. is uh, we've heard some pretty crazy stories about you from you yeah uh, and uh could you yeah, share a bit about oh. that topic yes i can this yeah. shit just fucking the alarm went off <laughs> oh no we're good yeah um <laughs> tutto bene guys tutto bene tutto bene what does that mean apposto, apposto. everything good oh. everything good everything okay you know perfect italian way yeah i love it <laughs> uh yeah america is a cra i mean i don't want to say i mean america is a crazy place obviously but everywhere has its crazy moments and crazy people um for me spokane where i resided most of my childhood was yeah a very scary place and a lot of people it's funny, like the other night, Francois and I were out and I was telling him these stories and like him, who's the friend that we were with? Yes. Enos, she, she like both of them and like my, our friend Jonas too. I told these stories to and everyone was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, this is real. And it's so funny seeing your guys' reactions because it's so normal to me. But like, yeah, man, growing up in Spokane, uh, in public school specifically because I have friends that grew up in private school that never saw any of the things that I saw and like I think it was also just the time like I think the time that I was going into middle school 
and like all that shit i think was around when like i think the younger generations just started getting a little more crazy a little bit and like yeah from middle school seeing like girls getting their stomachs pumped from like overdosing on lean to like kids girls were getting pregnant at like 12 13 like i had a friend of mine there was gangs in my middle school that like i mean they're gangs middle school gangs not like i mean they were like doing some shit that as a middle school you're like holy shit this is kind of intense and so like i became friends with a lot of them because i didn't i was too scared that like they were gonna like either beat me up or whatever and they're like some of the nicest fucking people i've met and also like goes without saying but i feel like i need to say it because so many people are so quick to judge like these kids were some of the smartest fucking kids i've ever met in my life like and it's just so unfortunate that like it's just how they're brought up and and spokane's a very poor city for a lot of neighborhoods and a lot of gentrification going on and so these kids like found ways to like make ends meet and like support themselves and their families and, and a little extra and so yeah like middle school was a wild time to see like oh kids are like like i knew girls that like had done like crack that were like 13 years old and it was like what the fuck is going on and then like from that to high school where like people are getting shot at i'm seeing like the first gun i saw was in the back of my math class i was like 14 years old and like this this buddy of mine who was in a gang like told me like hey dude like you want to see something cool and i was like sure and he opened up his bag and there was like four racks of cash and golden brass knuckles and a glock and i was like what the fuck like she's grading i, I just got a b plus and you're showing me a gun like this is crazy and like i it's funny like i saw so much shit i had so many friends that it's most of the people i grew up with in high school like we all know at least one or two people that have died from from gun violence or definitely gotten shot at I mean, most, I don't say most people, but like me and my friends have gotten like shot out at like events or like things going on. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a weird place because it's a very pretty place and it's supposed to be like one of the best places to raise a family on like the Pacific, in the Pacific Northwest. But I think it's just like going to public school. And also it needs to be said, like the crowd that I chose to be around, like there's people that I went to school with that didn't see any of the same shit that I saw because like we weren't in the same circles, but yeah, it was, it was a wild place. And like, yeah, it's, it's kind of feels like a little like wormhole of like experiences. Like I've had like three, like really good childhood friends have all died from like just freak accidents that like to me are so like, Oh yeah, of course this would happen. But then like, I'll tell other people and they're like, what the shit? Like, to hear one of those stories is crazy but like three and like i'll never forget after my third friend died my parents sat me down at the table and they were like are you okay and i was like yeah i'm fine and they were like we want you to know that like we're both in our like 40s and 50s and this is not a normal experience to have as like a 19 year old like you've seen way too much shit and like a lot of the shit that i saw and experienced i didn't even tell my parents until a year ago because i didn't want them to be scared of like how i was growing up and so I told them over beers, my first legal beer, cause you have to be fucking 21. And I remember telling them and they were like, just freaking out. They're like, why didn't you tell us? And I was like, I just didn't want to, like there was no reason, nothing was gonna change, you know? But yeah, it's weird. Cause like, that's my perspective of America because that's what I grew up in. But also I feel as if there's a difference between like knowing, oh God, the GoPro's dying. It's not dying, but it's overheating. We can take a break. We can take a break. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. And we're back. <laughs> Guys, we're back in the cheap ass podcast. It's a cheap ass podcast, so yeah, equipment doesn't doesn't make good with we us. Got cameras dying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we find a way and we how do you say? Persevere. Persevere now and we with our own hands. We do things. Oh, DIY. Do it DIY. yourself. Yeah. We're doing yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. ourselves, guys. Yeah. So perfect. So let's go. Maybe you want to finish yeah, what yeah, you were yeah. saying about the the, 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 the experience Spokane. in the US. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they call Spokane Spokompton or Spokanistan. So that kind of puts it into perspective. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, I mean, I think America is, it's a, a wild place because of how normalized a lot of the things are that 
like when I tell these stories, make people kind of like lose their mind, but it's also very beautiful. And there's a lot of things to be very grateful about that country for sure. I think, I think also it goes with anything. Like we romanticize the places that we aren't from, you know, like I, I love Europe so much because I'm from America and I'm like, Oh, the way of life is like so much, blah, blah. but then like I'm here for three months and like, I hear a lot of people's stories of like, yeah, it's great to like people that aren't from here. But then like a lot of people are like, yeah, I want to go somewhere else. Or like when I, my first month here, especially in Rome, people I were meeting where I was like, yeah, I'm from America. Almost every person was like, I want to go to America so bad. Like I want to go, I want to go. And I was like, Holy shit. Like that is something I didn't even think of. So yeah. It's, it's a wild place, but Spokane specifically is just like a, yeah, weird time capsule of, of craziness, but it's, it's a beautiful place in my home. It's an amazing transition you do, uh, brother, because I wanted to ask you something. Uh, when we first met, I was telling you, where, oh, bro, where are you from? That's the question here, because yeah. that's kind of the, you know, it's sometimes it's even a bit uh, complicated. It's always the same thing sometimes. Um, like, where are you from? My name is Toma. No, no, no. But yeah. so I asked you, where are you from? And you were like saying, but really shy in a shy way. Yeah. I'm from the U.S. And, and it's not the first time uh, people from the U.S. kind of yeah. tend to like, I wouldn't say hide it, but maybe say it with a a bit of shame in the voice or like uh, yeah they're a bit scared of saying it like embarrassment embarrassment more yeah. than scared yeah of course that's, yeah. that's the word uh, more than um, so I don't know maybe you want to talk about it uh, yeah I I think the embarrassment and the shame just comes from like we constantly see on like our social media just like fucked up shit that's happening in the states and like it's like that for every like my cousin lives in Grenoble, France, and like her entire like timeline. Shout out! <laughs> Shout out to Grenoble, Grenoble guys! To, Shout to out to Grenoble. <laughs> he like she she'll see on her timeline like it's videos of like fucked up things that are happening in France, and like she'll send them to me. So like it's the same like wherever you're fucking living, and you're gonna see the the shitty things and like the media, of course. But I think in America, it's just so like intensely fucked up like mainly our guns like for me when i bring up like oh i'm from america and like i always say i don't know if i said it the night that i met you toma but i always say like oh i'm from america unfortunately like i always say unfortunately and you you made me realize like hey man like it doesn't have to be unfortunate like there's there's things that like you 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 do have and and things that you can't appreciate and i think for me it comes from just like mainly seeing the shit that I saw growing up and seeing how different it is for like people here, it makes me feel kind of guilty of like, I live in this, this place that like is a scary place to like a lot of other people. And for me, it's mainly the politics is like why I always say like, unfortunately, cause people think like I'm, I'm I mean, immediately people are like, Oh, so you, you, you like Donald Trump, you support Trump, you, you have guns. I'm like, no dude, no to both of those. So, yeah, I think the, the guilt kind of just comes from, and I think also, I think like as an American, I romanticize or we romanticize Europe. So coming here and meeting all these like really fucking dope Europeans and then being like, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, well, America. And then I like immediately I'm like, oh, it's not as cool, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. And maybe we can ask that question also to Francois because yeah to our listeners guys Francois is uh, half French and half American let's say like his mother is American so yeah maybe you want to talk about it like I also come from like uh, I have some origin like my parents aren't French they're both from Romania so I think it's always cool to have a double culture uh, yeah and uh, yeah maybe you want to talk about that also do you also have sometimes that feeling with the US like you're not maybe as proud as people from Romania or people from Spain or people from yeah. Algeria, Morocco, um, I don't, yeah, in general. There, there's definitely, uh, I guess, some amount of shame of being from a place such as America. Um, the most telling example is when I go abroad and I can't speak the local language at all and I have to speak English. I'll, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll change my accent to not sound American so people don't think I'm that dumb American that just doesn't yeah. want to make an effort. Uh, but generally, yeah, I'm from France and from America. So th the two worst countries on <laughs> on each continent. So I, I don't feel a great deal of, of pride for my country's 
but uh, I'm definitely grateful for for, yeah. uh, for the opportunities and and for the good the good aspects the good sides of what these countries provided for me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't really I'm not really a very proud guy when it comes to nationalities and in in countries and really i just i feel bad because i've met you know some israelis recently some some russians and i'm like i feel the same way you felt about cooper being maybe a little a bit of shame yeah. about being married like, you don't feel ashamed about being where you're for where yeah for, about being where you're from you know just own it and uh and try to be a good person despite your yeah the weird place you might be from you know yeah definitely i think to a to a different degree uh, when we say we're french uh, the most uh, common answer I get is like, especially from Paris. When I say I'm from Paris, that's the thing. Even to other French people, yeah. The first answer, guys, is always, "Oh, you're nice for a French guy. Oh, you're nice for guys from Paris." I don't get that. And I'm like, okay, okay, why not? And I get a bit like the big city vibe where people are fucking always, all the time, in a hurry. Yeah. They don't. They don't. But also. When you live in a big city like Paris, I, I feel New York also have a bit yeah, of that vibe, and sure. I guess Los Angeles, maybe Boston, yeah, um, have those vibes. It's it's also complicated to trust people because you have a lot of bad encounters. To be honest, yeah, you were talking about um, violence in the streets, stuff like that. I, I won't say I have at just a bit of the experience you got yeah. in the U.S., but we have some shits sometimes going on in Paris. I had some friends. A beat up in the street just to f for fun. I got attacked by people yeah. uh, with like fucking knives and and taser it was scary as hell. Yeah, but the fact is like I don't. Yeah, it's for it's the same for me. Like a lot of people say, oh, you're nice for a French or you're nice. And it's like okay, well, I'm glad, but maybe that yeah, that's yeah. the thing because with the I know with the, you uh, the American pe people. They're always like a, pre a bit shy and I'm like, um, okay, the camera is down again, guys. Oh, Ciao. camera died. Bye-bye. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Go, go well, on. I don't understand the whole like French, like so many people were like, oh, the French, like you're going to Europe, you're going to France, like they're going to be so rude, all this shit. And like everyone was so nice in Grenoble specifically. Shout out. So nice. <laughs> Paris, I... It wasn't as friendly, but like you said, it's because it's a fucking huge city and everyone's like, like, that's the same anywhere. And like, I fuck, I'd say like New York and Boston, like I've, I've spent good time in both of those places and like it, people are way meaner there than what I experienced in like Paris or fucking Milan, like any big city here. Like people are a little more uptight because like they have a lot more just like literally going on in their environment. But yeah, no, I, I think the French thing comes from like... I started my whole trip in France. So like my first like interaction was like with all the French and I was like, these people are so nice. And then I would go to other places and I could tell, I could see why people would say like, Oh, the French are like rude or like not as like, like open to like strangers and like foreigners. Cause I think just other countries in Europe are like, like fucking when I was in like Zagreb, Croatia and like Prague, like, those people were like extremely like opening and like welcoming and i don't think it's a, the fault of anybody like i think just like some and also they're not as fucking busy and big as like some of these places in france so i think people like my friends that are from italy but i i, I make music with them in olympia they're both from milan it, well they're both just like from around italy and they were like oh paris is so dirty and the people there are so like rude blah 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 and then like i was there and i facetimed them and i was like guys this is one of the cleaner fucking cities i've been in and they were like what and i was like compared to like seattle and portland those places and then they're like whoa 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 whoa! you can't compare it to we're talking about european cities i was like okay i'll let you know and then yeah from paris to like all the other cities i've been to it's definitely like dirtier but like fuck even like milan was dirty like it's a big city so it's gonna happen yeah i mean rome dude rome like it's it smells pretty fucking gnarly a lot of the time and like and, yeah and and you're not here during summer because it's when it's 40 oh. degrees outside bro god and you have all the garbage and he knows it better than me but uh yeah it was it, it could be really awful sometimes just last night when we were at the bar and sitting next to the trash i thought about that i was like oh fuck the summer is gonna be nasty just, just have a question now. Maybe go on a more like <laughs> personal aspect of your life. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. 
How many countries? Just answer to that. How many cities and country have you done since three months since in, you're in Europe? Okay, I started in Paris, Grenoble, Geneva, for like a day, um, Rome, Budapest, Zagreb, Vienna, Prague, Milan, and then Rome again. I don't think I'm missing any. Am I mistaken to say that you came back to Rome specifically because of us for this yeah. last leg of your trip? Yeah, yeah. no, actually, I, I was supposed to finish my trip in, in Copenhagen and I was looking at it and I was like, I don't want to end it alone. Like traveling for three months alone has been really intense. And the only place that I've found real community has been Rome. And like I was talking to Chloe the other night our friend chloe i was like it's just so crazy that like, shout out also shout yeah. out chloe shout, shout out, out chloe, chloe. She'll she's be on here she's also american and french at the same time like yeah uh, like. yeah and she, she i was just like i met these people like i met all of you within like three or four days and when i met you guys i was only supposed i, I was booked to be in rome for a week and then i extended it for another week because i was like fuck i really like hanging out with these people and to become like such quick like good friends with these people really blew me away that like it was that easy and so i was like i want to oh bless you i want to finish my my trip with these people that i i want to finish my trip with the people i found community and you know so yeah mainly these two guys <laughs> okay so you did like 10 cities yeah seven countries in three months i have to ask though <laughs> Where are the baddies? I wonder no, where I know, going. I don't know. <laughs> How was it? Like, did you... Like the top cities? No, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> with with girls or boys, I don't know. Like, did you have, like, was it cool? Is there also, we're talking about difference. I don't want to... It's a bit like a teenager question, but... Yeah, no, I mean... Is I, there some difference how you flirt with people? And... Yeah. And did you like it here in Europe? And yeah, stuff oh, like that? Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Europe, I think... Yeah. That's ah! the, the one... <laughs> <laughs> The one thing that we do romanticize and it holds truth is like the people here are just fucking beautiful. Like, like compared to America, dude, it's, it's incomparable. Like I was, I was in Milan with my buddies, Kobe and Eros last week. And like, we're all going back to Olympia and our homes within the month. And we are just all talking about genuinely how shitty it's going to be to be walking the streets of Olympia, Seattle, whatever, and not like be constantly amazed at like the beautiful people like everywhere i've been in europe straight up within every three to five minutes i see someone walking the street where i'm like what the fuck you are gorgeous and not even like oh i want to smash i'm like damn you're a beautiful looking person and like it's rare to come by where i'm from to see like consistently so many beautiful people this is accurate living in rome <laughs> i can testify i can attest to the fact that you will fall in love every single day with the new girl. I do. I fall in love every day. Every single day. I text my friends every day back home. I'm like, oh, just fell in love again. And they're like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so did you find a girl here? <laughs> or multiple? Okay. No names. No names. Yeah, no names. No names no or names. fake names. No names. Course. Um. Okay. Well, I think like to get into this, it's important to like the background of why I even took this trip was I was with a girl for three years and then we decided to break up because we weren't happy and wanted different things out of life and yada yada, a lot of yap. And <laughs> we broke up, but then while we, we decided we were gonna break up, but she couldn't leave our house that she was, she was living with me at the time. And so we were, we had a planned date that we were gonna break up but we still lived together for two months while we knew we were going to break up. So it was like really fucking emotionally intense and super draining. But once we made that decision to break up, I was like, all right, I need to like go to Europe for three months. Like I had no idea why I was just like, I need to book this trip and be out by myself in a new place for three months. And so I booked it, like not even thinking about it. And then the time came and I was like, holy fuck, I'm actually doing this. And I was terrified to go. Cause like, I started getting a lot of really intense anxiety that I never felt before when we had broken up because we were together from 18 to 21 years old, which is like discovering who you are as an adult with this person. So like I thought a big part of who I was was because of this person and, and it was, but then not having that person every day anymore, I got really fucking anxious. And so 
this whole trip has been like a trip of like self-discovery and like healing for sure and like we've been broken up for like seven eight months now but like just processing who i am as an adult on my own and like learning about who i am and rediscovering who i am so at first i was like i'm gonna be fucking hoeing around all throughout europe like blah 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 and then like once i got out here i realized pretty quickly one the style that i have is a very different style than most places in europe and that I think it shocks a lot of girls in either a negative or positive. I think sometimes they're like, this dude looks fucking homeless. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> or other times they're like, oh shit, I've never seen this before. And I'm really interested in why he's dressed like this. But I realized like, and I was, I did my fair share of like hooking up with people right after the breakup before I came to Europe. And just like after a while, I was like, I don't feel any like not being in love with this person while hooking up like sucks it sucks and like i want to share an energy and like a connection with this person that i'm having sex with but then i don't have enough energy to give this person it's so like i don't want a meaningless hookup so i want to have a connection but then i don't want i don't have enough energy or care enough to try to get that connection so then it's just like well what do i do and I started realizing like, okay, maybe I'm just out here by myself, not having hookups because it kind of like, no pun intended, but it fills a hole, you know, like it's filling that thing that like, isn't there and that I want like that comfort and that romance. So I've met a lot of girls out here and a lot of like the muse, the most beautiful girls I've ever met. And I've had opportunities where like things could have happened. And like, I've been asked like, all right, do you want to go back to my place or vice versa? And in those moments where like I can make that decision, I've every time been like, no, like I, I don't want to. So you have found Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, I'm celibate. I found the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's, that's guys. That's what we want. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's actually a Christian podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, if it was a Christian podcast, we have more money, I think. Cheap ass uh, Christian. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, because also I think when how you see seeing what you want with more connection, it's also maybe a dangerous move knowing that you're leaving. Yes. Like you you staying like for day. Well, you stay more in Rome because obviously you you like us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> But except from that, you were staying like maybe one week, five days, exactly. six days, and it's, it's it's a dangerous move. I, I feel what you mean. Can I just ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah of It's course. It's a bit personal, man, but is it like the first time you had sex? Was it with yeah. your girlfriend or no? Yeah, my first time ever having sex, I was 14. And yeah, we were we were dating. And like, that was the moment. Like, yeah, okay. Like, this is, I think that's a good thing to bring up is like, it was with someone that I was in love with. Like, that was my experience. And then, yeah, like most times of like hooking up with other people, if I'm not like in love with them, I'm like, huh, oh, all right, this was fun, but... Was it with the same girl you just broke up before going to no. the No, okay, okay. No, okay. yeah. That was the thing. But on that note, like, there's been a, a couple girls here where, like, even that feeling of, like, okay, I don't have enough energy or, like, I'm here for a week, so what's the point of trying to get to blah, blah, blah. There's been a couple girls where I'm, like, fuck, this might be worth trying to, like, develop that connection and, like, try to get that going. But... The first one, it's funny, you both, you both know both of these people, but the, the first one when I was here last time. No name, guys. Yeah, no, no name, names. no name. Uh, we were talking like kind of ish for like a, a little bit and like it was flirty, but I couldn't tell the vibes. But then there's this other dude who she was always talking to also. And I was like, huh, I don't know. And then I, I just found out the other night that they're now dating. So this is yeah it makes sense and then this other girl i met literally fuck when did i get here wednesday night i met her wednesday it's now sunday and i was like fuck you are so cool we talked for hours and i remember like immediately telling my my homies i was like fuck i want to like actually get to know her but there's complications with that she's seeing someone and i don't know yeah it's it's a weird one but Again, I leave in fucking three days. So, yeah, it's hard to, like, want to put that effort in. But it's also fun. I think that's what I'm realizing is, like, 
when it's someone that I actually am like, maybe this is worth it. A whole thing about flirting is like, it's fun. It feels good. It's like a funny thing to do. So I, that's why I like really like her is because when we're talking, it's like constant flirting and just like eating up all of that like energy and that like tension. But yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll see you tonight. I think, yeah, flirting can also be done just for the flirting. You know, it can also be the um, objective. I'm, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of people who are like um, in a couple, like they have a girlfriend or boyfriend. And they say to me like, uh, you know, I feel a bit shameful to say that, but I know I won't kiss that person. I know I won't sleep with that person. But yeah, sometimes, you know, when you're with somebody after one year, after two years, three years, four years, yeah. sometimes five years, it's 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 six years <laughs> seven years <laughs> so sometimes it's, al it's also it can like you miss maybe that feeling you know of like for sure somebody like you you like a bit you like mm -hmm. him and you have to try it's like a whole process and it's yeah it's a cool process you you use the word funny i will even say it's cool yeah it's like, it's for a, real it's, it's a nice process is is i mean you feel like you you attracted yeah. You're attractive. I mean, you attract somebody, and you're also attracted. It's a it's a cool thing. So because you're getting it back, like it's going back and forth. So it's like you're constantly in this like dance of like I'm gonna make you feel good. Now you're gonna make me feel good about myself, and like like it feeds the ego too, which I think is a, a nice thing about it. But yeah, I mean, what, what you just explained, that's pretty much what happened with me and my ex. Of like we're together for three years, and then we were living together, and we're like, fuck, dude, this is not as like fun as it used to be, and like we're not as happy, and like that whole idea of like flirting and like going out doing fun things just like kind of slowly started to like disappear and i was like well i guess both of us were like it's time to move on and get away from that but yeah and how was the um, just wanted to ask that because it's not the first time i hear kind of a arrangement like that mm -hmm. when you decide to split up and you're still living together was it like as friends you still had sex you still yeah. enjoy each other how, how was it like it was weird because we were we were dating we were still dating and like the the thing like the love never went away so we were still very much in love but i'm glad that she said this at the time i was like ah oh, dang that sucks but i'm glad that she she made the boundary of like i don't want to have sex if we're gonna break up like for these next two months that's gonna make things a lot harder for me and just like it's an emotional thing and like especially when you're in love and so i was like okay yeah that makes sense and so like but then it made it even weirder because like we're dating and we're in love but then like we're not having sex and like we're constantly talking about like breaking up and it was it was really like i was clinically depressed like those two months just like then it sucked because once we made that decision then we started to feel a lot like the happiest we felt in a while because there's no reason to like argue. There's no reason to like trip out about anything because like, you know that you're gonna leave. So then everything started becoming like happy, but then those happy moments, once you realize how happy you are, you're like, oh, we're breaking up. Like this is ending. So it was a bunch of back and forth and I was really sad most of the time, but yeah, we were dating the whole time and then it just stopped <laughs> but don't you think like uh, also the fact that you take the decision is a bit like the fucked up human uh, human spirit of like oh now i have it i'm a bit like i want something else i want to broke up yes and once you know it broke like take one of my example before moving to italy five months ago i was i was seeing different girls i was seeing like more than one girl but yeah uh, one was a bit more uh, there were more like emotion in it not that much to be honest because you can't see f three different girls and have emotions yeah. for them that much but there were a bit more emotions and when I really split up I wasn't that sad to do it I yeah. was like well I have to go I'm, I'm, I'm sorry but the next the the next hour I was like is it a good decision and stuff like yeah. that and of course because I wasn't in love at all like I was just I like her yeah um, that that feelings disappear after like one hour, <laughs> two, yeah. two, maybe now, maybe a day, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think it's also the human fucked up spirit of like we want what we can't thing. have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, and I think that's um, the crazy thing, you know, when you fight with somebody to have more, and once you have more, you're scared because you're trapped. Yes. It happens to me so many times, guys. It's, yeah, it's a scary feeling. It is. You feel like oh. I put so much effort. I put, I put some, I, I said, I asked the girl, yeah, could we have more? And like, 
now you have it and then you're like well maybe i don't like but you I, want yeah but you think you might know uh, yes that's that's the crazy thing i don't know if i want to add something francois because i you really you're a good listener but i know you i'm a virgin so i don't know what's <laughs> talk, I don't know what's happening right now guys but hey. yeah. no no you're gonna ask the question Oh, the question you don't have to answer if you're not comfortable. <laughs> this is the one you've been hiding from me. <laughs> that's, that's, the one yeah. we, that's the one we. No, you, you should ask it. It's, it's your favorite question. Come on. <laughs> no, it's not my favorite question. I think it's it's the question we want to maybe make a, like a small, uh, not fashion, but we want to do it every every podcast at okay. one point. It's a bit like the surprise question. Okay. It comes. Is it the uh, same question for everyone? Yeah, it will be. It okay. will be the same question okay. because it's, it's the first first podcast of Chip Ass Podcast. But it will be. I hope it will be in every 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 okay. podcast we do. What's your body count, man? <laughs> 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 no cap and stop yapping. No cap. Okay. <laughs> oh, I almost started saying names. Okay. No, no names no if names. you want. No, 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 no. Yeah, no names. No numbers, names. numbers, yeah. guys. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, I need to count though. Give us a, like a, yeah, a ballpark number. Okay, okay, ballpark. I know, I know. Minimum it's fifteen, but I. <sighs> okay. Tw- fifteen to twenty. I want to. I think I know that it's it's around twenty three. It's around twenty three. Twenty three to twenty five. Yeah. I think I've, I'm capping at twenty five. I think. For now. You're on the top of the list because you're the first one that comes. <laughs> That's, we should do, we should maybe do that. Yeah, we have should a have a scale. That, that, a that, that could be a f- that could be now because that would be a bit shaming people for oh, not having sex. We're no, not shaming. Sex by the great. way, yeah, it's a great thing to do. By by the way, is, is these numbers we just want to ask the question because we think it's like interesting also yeah, to no, to, I, to. I think so. But you could have done sex twenty times, twenty five times. Yeah zero times and still be happy yeah and still and still be happy you know <laughs> and you also could have done like sex could have sex for like a million time and be sad as fuck so yeah it doesn't for sure it doesn't mean anything. no pressure on that boys and girls listening to the podcast yeah it's just a question because i want to <laughs> ask after that of course that's not the objective of the question it's like how many was like hookups one night yeah. hookups, and how many was like I love you, baby. You know, I, I love you, babies. Were one, two, three. <laughs> I think three, and, and just the, I like you, baby. The it's I like I love you, baby, and the, I like you, baby. Like the most on the. It wasn't just one night or a few times. It was like at least yeah, on yeah, the, yeah, yeah. One more for more, you know. Okay, there's there's three. I love you, babies, and then there was probably like five. There was five women where it was like a consistent thing, but it wasn't I love you. And then the rest were all hookups that, yeah, just happened. I Actually, I changed that to two I love you babies because one, one girlfriend I had, I didn't, it, I didn't love her. No names, shout guys. Out. But shout yeah. Out. No <laughs> names, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and no sh- and shout out. Shout out to I hope she's out. doing well today. And uh, I yeah, hope they're I, all doing well, to be honest. Yeah, I hope they all are. Yeah, for sure. She blocked me on everything. She hates me. Yeah, but she's great. She's a great person. I have nothing against her. It's just I, she loved me and I didn't love her back. And yep. And overall, did you think now? Did you handle the situation well, or you could have been better? Yeah. How old were you? Can you give us a bit of context? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. The context was she was going to college, and I was a year younger than her, so I was having my senior year of high school, and I I really liked her. And she told me she loved me. And it was actually really shitty. We're like, I was leaving her apartment. And while I'm leaving, she goes, I love you for the first time. And I hear it, but I don't turn back because I was like, fuck, I don't, I don't think I'm in love yet. So I just kept walking. And then I heard her say it one more time. Like, I love you. And I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I just kept going. And then I got in my car. And when I get home, she called me and she was like, so what the fuck was that about? And I was like, oh, what? And she was like, I know you hurt me. And I was like, what are you talking about? I felt so bad, dude. But I was like, I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to tell you I love you. So I don't want to turn back and be like, I like you. Like I don't, or I don't want to be like, I love you and lie. 
So that was like a point of tension. And then after that, she was getting ready to go to school and she was going to go to Seattle and I'm, we were in Spokane at the time and it's, it's like a five hour drive, but I was in high school and I was like, I don't know if I want to do long distance. Like, especially she's going to be a freshman in college. Like she's got to experience like her first year of college the right way. And which is so ironic. And I think why she rightfully doesn't care for me is because like a year after that, me and my ex-girlfriend did long distance like for three years and like, but it's a whole different thing and yeah, different people. But yeah, I, I think I handled it well. I think I could have been more graceful and more understanding of like, this person was in love with me. And so like, just because I didn't feel that way doesn't mean that I should have treated her like without that, like care and love. But yeah, I was also young as fuck. I was like 17. So I didn't know what I was doing, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wish her the best. Oh, that's cool. I, I think, as you said, sometimes when you're the one uh, who is not in love and you face... I never, I've always been the one in love. Oh, in love. I've always been the one with more, I would say, uh, uh, emotions towards the other person. It's complicated because sometimes I did it. I'm, I feel sad now for, for, for those girls. I, I was some pressure with that because I wanted more you know I was happy with yeah. them more than they were with me of course yeah. and, and also they weren't brave enough because I put them in specific situation also to be honest for sure complicated situation for them and and, 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 yes. and they weren't maybe feeling comfortable enough to say like we should break up yeah but guys if one day guys and girls and boys and women and guys and everybody um, I think also when you do one because I had also the situation when I was the one less in love, you have to sometimes be the one who is braver and see yeah. that you like that person, you like it because you like her, you know, and, 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 but she likes you better and she will never be really happy with you. Yeah. And sometimes you have to be braver than everybody and be the, the good human and be like, okay, I like her. I like to hang out with her. I like to, I, had, I like to have sex with her also, I like to go to restaurants, stuff like that. But, I don't like her enough. Yeah. And I can't provide this and, and she will never say, she will never stop the relationship because she's in fucking love with me, you know? Yeah, exactly. So that will never come from her or from him. Like in specific yeah. case was from her because she's not the one that can do that. Like emotionally, she's so dependent to you. She can't do it. And sometimes that's when you got to man up, you know? Yeah. And, and be like, okay, I will lose a bit, but she's losing too much because of me yeah in a way because sure. of me it's complicated because you can't choose to have feelings or no but <coughs> yeah i think it's sometimes you i think that's like a, there's a fine line there with like like my ex when we first started dating like i was head over heels to the point where like there was definitely moments and like we've talked about it where like i made her uncomfortable with like the things i was saying so early like i was like we've been together for like three or four months and i was already talking about like so what's the plan like after college like all this shit and she was like you need to chill the fuck out like i love you but we just started dating and like i don't know what the future holds and like i realized through therapy and through like talking with my family that like i was so i needed to have like i needed to know for sure that this was not gonna disappear and realize that came from like my parents divorce of like separation anxiety of like being scared that something is going to disappear that like means a lot to me and so i was constantly trying to be reassured that she's not leaving which like what the fuck in a relationship being like so like you're not gonna we're not gonna break up like like i would literally i would say shit like yeah like so like when we're when we're still together like and i'd say like a year from now and she'd be like i don't want to say yes we'll be together because that's not fair to be like yeah we'll still be together like you don't know and I put her in so many positions where like, it was just, it was like manipulative for sure in a way, but I didn't know that it was, I was just like trying to get reassurance, reassurance. And then I wasn't enjoying some of it because I was constantly worried about the future. And then she's constantly worried about the future. Cause she's like, well, fuck, he's so deep into it. And I'm just like here enjoying it. Yeah. So that was a great lesson for me of how I, how I treat relationships and ones I love for sure. You guys are a couple of very wise 20 something year old guys. I'm very <laughs> impressed. 22, yeah. baby. 20 something, yeah. Um, <laughs> I heard you mention therapy. Could you, yeah. uh, what was your experience with that? Very few men even confess to having been gone to therapy. Yeah. Then, if we can switch to your 
parents divorce thing because yeah. you have a pretty interesting situation I told you about again mm -hmm. we talk about it guys so I kind of know, I know him so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so yeah about like your stepdad and stuff like that yeah Th that would be great man but let's go with the therapy and yeah. or you want to make the context first I don't know as you want yeah 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 no I, I think it, it all I when I was a kid I had like fucking really bad anxiety but it was like I had the one thing I was anxious about was that somebody was going to come into my house and kill my mom. Like that, that was it. I was terrified. Like I would sleep with my mom and my stepdad. Like I would sleep on the floor of their room, like for night, like for, I think I, I was like 10, 11. No, I think I was a little younger, but like for like months at a time. And like, they would just deal with it. Cause I was terrified but then found like so then started going to therapy because my parents were like fuck he's sleeping in our room every night and also like i was just scared and like we go to restaurants and i'd be like f just like get panic attacks for no reason about like something like that happening to my mom and then found out through therapy i was like i think i started when i was like seven eight years old and i did it for years i think i, I ended it when i was like 12 12 13 I ended that time but we the breakthrough was that we found out that stemmed from my dad showing me the dark Knight rises batman and when i was like five years old like he showed he would show me scenes of movies that no five-year-old should probably see but he would like censor the worst ones he wouldn't show me like the sex scenes or like people like dying but he'd try to show me like good films at the time he was also an alcoholic so i don't think he realized what he was doing but there was that one scene in batman where the robber comes and shoots both of his parents dead in front of him when he's a kid and that's what fucking triggered it i'm i'm really sorry it's like i'm i'm a huge fan of batman i think it's batman begins sorry yeah, i think i think you're right i when i said yeah <laughs> sorry, because, uh, shout out to christopher nolan yes, because big shout out. that's some great that's some amazing movie i'm i'm, oh I'm guessing he's really sad now that he gave you that yeah. but <laughs> that's some amazing movie and and dark knight still one of my favorite movies ever like for sure yeah, but no, you're you're, you're definitely gone, right. man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, 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 you're good. I'm a bit dumb. Sorry, guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so that started that, and yeah, therapy as a kid was really. I mean, you're, you're, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about like. Also, my mom just grew me up in a way to like be very like emotionally expressive. I think I don't even know how she did it, but I, I grew up going to this wilderness school called Twin Eagles Wilderness School, where we learned like how to live off the land and like learned a lot of like old techniques of like mindfulness and things like that. So I think doing that from like the age of like four till I was like 14 turned me into like a unique kid at the time. So like taking therapy as a kid, I thought was just normal. I didn't know that it was like a taboo thing really. And then once like we had the breakthrough, I started to like feel a lot better and was like becoming a young adult. I was like 12, 13. So I was like, I think I'm fine with therapy. I don't think I need it anymore. And I had the same therapist for years. Shout out Tina. She's fucking awesome. Shout out Tina. Uh, for my last session, she got me, she knew that Lionel Messi was my favorite soccer player. And so she got me a super nice poster that I still have to this day of Messi. So far. But um, yeah, so then I thought I was like fine. And then when Trump got elected and all the shit, the beginning of a lot of shit with North Korea started happening where like they were going back and forth, threatening every day about nuking each other. A lot of my anxiety started to come back and like there was a bombing that happened. North, North Korea bombed Guantanamo Bay. And I remember we were in Oregon on a family vacation and I was like having a panic attack again. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was like terrified of dying. And so I got really scared. And then, was like, ah, I should maybe go back to therapy. So I went back a little bit through high school, but then I was just so busy with soccer and then the concussions and music that like, I didn't go most of high school. And then I just started back for the first time in like four, like five, six years. I just started again um, after the breakup and after like becoming alone for the first time in like as an adult in the last three years. I knew that I needed somebody to talk to on a regular basis. And so, but because of American insurance and all this shit, I can't do it while I'm out here. So I haven't had any therapy for three months, but I had like four sessions with her before I left. And like, it just, it's so nice to talk to someone and I don't understand why it's such a 
taboo thing for men to have therapy like it's just someone to talk to and that's literally it like yeah they're experts in in like the mind and and they ask good questions that lead you to answers but like it's for me it's just that i have someone to talk to that isn't that that i'm not worried about how much i'm talking to them like they listen as their job and they give you some tools that absolutely help you and they've helped me immensely and like just being able to talk to someone that cares enough to give you help is so fucking important and i don't understand why people are like oh that's some pussy shit like yeah i never understood no no i i I totally agree with you you know i'm a really anxious guy a lot like too much to be honest because i think you can say it's too much when it's like first you're scared of the future 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 yeah about, uh, uh, because of that yeah that's the first thing and also because like on almost my everyday life it has an impact yes. like um yeah it's bus metros yes. subway uh sometimes social gathering yeah and uh, as you said you were talking about men's and maybe that's one of the only subject where men's are more like less equipped than mm-hmm. girl on that there's like they're more men that are dying by suicide than women mm-hmm. and as you said I, I i felt that you know the pussy thing you talk about it it was not strong because i had a chance to grow up in like pretty open-minded uh, group of people in paris nice um pretty left and stuff like that so it was always and my parents are pretty cool people like shout out shout out to shout out to the parents shout out to the parents <laughs> um <laughs> so that that's the cool part but you know like Especially when you, I don't know if you saw, but I'm, I'm a pretty tall guy. Uh, I'm pretty sportive guy also. And when I, I say that to people, like, oh, I'm scared to take the bus sometimes. I feel like if I was, I don't, I don't maybe a girl or like more like you know, uh, look weaker than yeah. that. People were like, oh yeah, but because yeah. I'm like that, they're like sometimes like, oh you? It's not like it's not mean. It's not like they're oh like, you, but like surprise kind. It's of. like surprise, and that's yeah. surprise like. Is it normal? Like, uh, do I have the right to be scared of that? And yeah, of course. Yeah, it's sometimes is. Uh, yeah, it's complicated, you know. It is, especially like you said, every day, like every day being out here, like I, I'll wake up and like it's kind of hard to breathe, or like I notice like a shortness of breath, and there's nothing else happening besides like, oh, I'm kind of just like anxious about the day, or like you speak about you sorry yeah 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 yeah. like i'll wake up and be like what am i ang- i have no idea why i'm feeling anxious like even this morning before i came here i like I-, I meditate every morning is like my since i came out here i've been meditating and journaling every morning is my routine and it's helped me so 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 fucking much because i f- when i first started feeling all the anxiety before i came out here like it was so bad that i literally thought i had to go to like a psych ward to like get help or that I'd have to like start taking like pills to like fix my mind because I was like constantly in a state of like dissociation. Like I felt like everything was a movie and I was just so anxious about everything. And like, I couldn't sleep at night and all this shit. And then after like a month of doing meditation and, and journaling, realizing like I'm still an anxious person, but those skills help me deal with that to where like now i don't freak out as much i can more like let it be there and like understand why it's there but like before coming today i was like feeling that a little bit and then realized like oh it's probably because like you're about to do this podcast like and like have this conversation and like all these new things that are are very new to me but yeah i i very much feel what you're saying about i think especially as as men expected to like or just like that that sense of shock of like oh you're scared to take the metro like yeah dude i'm fucking i'm a little worried right now like yeah <laughs> and that's the thing it's like you know it's pretty normal stuff uh, yeah it's just like doing a podcast with some friends it's yeah. just like taking the metro it's just like taking the bus it's yeah yeah bro it's uh it's a complicated thing so to all the people out there uh struggling with mental illness i know it's really like it's a pretty common thing to say but we really mean it yeah uh, for real uh, the three of us and everybody like go talk to your friends um, yeah 
go talk to a, a specialist yeah ask your parents it's like a, it's normal it's like being having a broken leg or having yeah. a, a, a cold coldness being cold it's like a real it's a real disease it's not like fake it's yeah it's, it's real and it's awful to be honest yeah it is it is really awful uh, it is and it's so common and that's what's so crazy it's so common and it's so awful and we don't talk about it a lot i, I think um you, you mentioned something really important with the um, bombing like the yeah north korea america u.s situation i think we talked with one of our friends adriano uh, a roman guy really shout out shout out <laughs> shout out to adriano um <laughs> roman guy really cool and he 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 is pretty oh, I, i guess i can talk a bit about it just just really fast mm -hmm. with the ukraine situation and i guess every situation palestine where yeah. what's happening there of course uh, again uh, it's 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 awful and so yeah it's becoming you know we we start to have maybe they had it also i mean they had the cold war they had all the crisis cuba yeah. cuba crisis so i don't know if it's a new thing but we have it that's for sure yeah definitely and also there's a climate change and i think that's yeah that's a thing that creates mm -hmm. more and more stress overall. yeah yeah and just seeing it everywhere i mean like it's just it's a constant like reality that we live in of like there's shit happening everywhere right now that's re like things that we can't imagine and like cannot fathom at all and i think seeing it so often it starts to get into our brains of like this is a reality and it's very very real and this could happen at some point wherever like yeah i think It's it's it fucking sucks. <laughs> very insightful stuff, guys. Thank you for sharing these very you know intimate things. And I'm sure lots of people are gonna it's gonna resonate with lots of people with our yeah. all our listeners, our millions of listeners, our millions, millions of listeners. But uh, of the cheap ass podcast. <laughs> cheap so guys, it's, <laughs> it's about time to wrap up. Um, it's been almost We're two hours now. Light. We're losing light. We got uh, we got stuff to do, guys. It's Rome. It's a busy city. We're so. gonna fucking party, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> Coop, do you have any things you want to? Last things you want to say? Any plug? Yeah. You wanna you wanna do? Go right. stream Browns Edition on Spotify. Look up Coop C double O P C O O P Browns Edition. You're gonna have to look both of those up at the same time. There's about 40 other coops, so do that. Uh, go check me out on Instagram, YouTube been posting some shit it's cool it's fun and shout out to these two for having me as the first guest hopefully i come back in like a year and with our millions of fans and subscribers and all that shit we'll we'll have a a still cheap ass podcast but it'll be it'll be always guys even always. more sick <laughs> but yeah thank you thank you for having me seriously i'm i'm gonna miss both of you a lot and i'm glad that it worked out tonight likewise, likewise. Right, same for us guys um i hope you enjoyed the podcast if you want to share it to friends i, I, I it's a cheap ass podcast so maybe the sound <laughs> is not the best the, the light is the not light the best. one of like our cameras the, is gone <laughs> one of the cameras is <laughs> gone but uh it's made with the heart Absolutely. you yes. know and i think that's the most important and it's like a normal podcast uh, it's a cheap ass normal cheap podcast, ass normal i would podcast. say stay tuned Stay tuned, for that. Stay tuned for the next episodes, guys. Yes, sir. And have a great evening or day or whatever is happening in your part of the world. All right. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bow. <laughs>